جنابہ Uh, state of Janaba means Islamic bath. Islamic bath become became obligatory upon you. Okay. State of Janaba mean Islamic bath or bath of purification became obligatory for, for on you. So when does Islamic bath become obligatory upon you? Or when do you enter the state of Janaba? Um, after sex, after menstruation, after wet dreams, and after nifas. Can you pray Salah in the state of Janaba? According to Ayah 43, No, we cannot unless we perform Islamic bath. Okay, Ayah 43 of which surah? Of An-Nisa, Surah An-Nisa. Surah An-Nisa, yes. How to perform Islamic bath? Um, the first one, uh, you, uh, you wash your private part with left hand. And mm. then the second part is you wash your hands. And then you make wudu. And then you put water on the right side from head to feet. And then you put water from left side from head to feet. And the, water, the last one is water must touch whole body, especially the joint. Correct. Today we will study the Hadith class, inshallah. Today we will study from the book. Sahih al-Muslim. Hadith number 952. You can also call it Hadith number 105. This is, this depend on the uh, compiler of the book. So these two numbers, numbering are used at the moment. So, okay, we'll just read the Hadith. So the next student we have is Aisha. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. In this one. Al-Mughira bin Ruba narrated that he went with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the campaign to the book Al-Mughira said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out to relieve himself i carried a vessel of water for him before fajr prayer when the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came become to me i started pouring water on to his hand from the vessel he washed his hand three times then he washed his face then he then he went to roll the sleeve of his lock bag from his four arms but they were too tight so he brought his arms inside the clock and beneath it and washed his four arms up to the elbows then he wept over his cuff when he moved on al mughira said i came with yeah, him wait for hold for a second so here we have one hadith about the wudu there are many hadith about wudu in some hadith he washed everything two times in some hadith he washed as one time as well so We will just write the general thing which is the main sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So here, first question that you will write here today. How to perform Voodoo? So if you are just looking at the front, you can wash your body parts like hand, wash a face, feet one time as well. But if you want to do it in a sunna way, then we will you will have to wash everything three times. So next student, uh, Fatima Sarbast. Can you tell us? Wa alaikum assalam. Can you kindly tell us how to perform wudu in Sunna way? Yes or no? Um, I think uh, first, first thing, uh, some of them, I know some of them. I okay. Just her. No uh, problem. First thing you. is to make niya, to make okay. the intention. Okay. So, uh, so the first thing to do is to make an intention. And then uh, say uh, Bismillah. Okay. And after that, uh, you you're gonna you're going to wash your hands, uh, okay. three times. Yes. And then your face. Good. And your how do you say that? Your elbow. Yes. To your wrists. Wrist. Yes. And then your ears. Your nose, you, you you blow your nose, and then your hair. You're just gonna uh wipe, wipe on it. Okay, good. And then. And then after that, your uh, the last one is uh your feet, the two feet starting from the yeah I forgot to say it uh. When you are using, when you are washing, uh, your the part, uh, when you wash on making wood do, you always started, uh, on the on the right side. Okay. And then on the left side. Now we will write this answer in detail, inshallah. Okay, so I will prepare your pen. So the first thing is Bismillah. All of you must say Bismillah because according to one of these, a wudu is incomplete without saying Bismillah. So first thing that you need to say is start wudu with the name of Allah. This is the first thing. And then you need to wash your hands three times. Then three times you need to rinse your mouth and with the same water you will uh, clean your nose as well. So this is three times. So first you will take uh, water in your hand. You will put some water in, in your mouth and remaining water inside your nose. And make try to make sure that water go touches the main bone of the nose. So you need to take uh, what puts some water in your half, around half water in your mouth and half water in the nose in such a way that tr uh, try to touch the no hair uh, man born of the nose with the water you need to do it three times as well then you will wash your face three times after that you will wash your arms until the elbows three times then you will pass the wet hands you will wipe the wet pass the wet uh, wet hands over your head starting from front 
your hands will go to the back side then you will put your small finger i don't know what is small finger card name of fingers index finger middle finger light finger little finger yes little finger or it is also called pinky so you will put a little finger in your ear to clean it okay little finger little finger so here i will show you the little finger as well this one this smallest finger on our hand is called little finger so you will use this finger to clean your ear then you will use your thumb to clean the back side of the ear so remember use little finger inside the ear and use the thumb to clean the back side of the ear after that you will wash your feet three times and you must Wash your ankles as well because one uh, according to one of these there will be a punishment of fire for dry ankles so you need to wash your ankles as well okay now the next student Ummu Ahmad yes how to perform wudu in Sunnah First, you say Bismillah. Yes. And then you wash your hands three times. Yes. Then you rinse your mouth and nose three times. Yes. And then you wash your face three times. Yes. And then you wipe wet hands overhead. No, your arms until elbows. You wash your arms until elbows three times. Mm -hmm. And then wipe wet hands overhead and put small finger the pinky finger in your ear to clean it yeah. and you use the thumb to clean the outside ear correct and then after that you wash your feet and ankles three times correct this is the way we perform wudu in sunnah way and if you want to do just first only then just say bismillah and you can wash these things one time as well no need to but three times is Sunnah. Now, read from here. Al Mughira said, I came with him, and we found that the people had appointed Abdurrahman bin Auf to lead them in prayer. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam caught up with one of the raka, so he prayed the last raka with the people. Then when Abdurrahman bin Aw said the salam, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up to complete his prayer. That started start, start, start the, the Muslims and they started to say subhanallah. When the prophet had finished his prayer, he turned to the people and said, you did well. Oh, you did the right thing and was pleased that they had offered the prayer on time to the people and said okay. and offered the prayer on time. Normally, now today we have clocks, alhamdulillah. And normally there is an imam appointed in every mosque to say the prayer at time. Let's suppose the time of the Asr Salah is maybe maybe Maghrib Salah is 5 p.m. Sometimes it happens that Imam gets late. So if the clock tells us the time 5 p.m. and Imam is not present in the hall, what shall we do, Mr. Muhammad? We can use the question again, please. Let's suppose the time of Maghrib Salah is 5 p.m. 
and the imam who leads the player he gets late maybe so he is not present in the hall at 5 pm what shall we do um it may be anyone can lead the prayer oh yes if the imam is not present at the time then anyone can lead the prayer mosque so in this case in this hadith when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not there this sahabi abdul rahman bin of was leading the prayer so sahaba did not wait for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Rather, they started the salah at the fixed time. And Prophet ﷺ was pleased that they had offered the prayer on time. So same order for all of us. If Imam is not present at the time, then anyone can start the prayer. No need to wait for anyone. Okay? okay. No need to write any question for this one. Just remember if Imam is not present, at the time of salah, then anyone can start the salah. No need to wait for the imam. Next thing is very important because almost every person makes the mistake in this uh, regard. Have you ever prayed in congregational? Yes. Okay. So let me tell you, let me ask you a practical question. Let's suppose you went to the mosque for Maghrib Salah. When you entered the mosque, you saw that people are already in the third raka of Maghrib Salah. Okay? People have already prayed the first and second. And now they are praying the third raka of Maghrib Salah. They are in a standing in third raka. So what will you do now? Anyone can answer? I, uh, I think you I think you will join the, the prayer. Okay, you will join the prayer with the intention of third raka. Or with the intention of first rika? With the intention of third rika. Yes, we need to make the intention of third rika. So this means we are joining them in third rika. Now people make the mistake, they make the intention of first rika. This is wrong. When we are in congregational, we, we have to make niya whatever the people are praying. So they are praying third. So our intention must be third raka. So when they will say salam, this means we will stand up again for the first raka. After doing sajda, again people make mistake. They sit down to read because they think that now it is their second raka. No, it is their first raka. So they will not sit after sajda. Rather, they will stand and start the second raka, and then they will complete their salah. So here I see majority of the people make mistake in the mosque, especially in Maghrib Salah. It is very common. I wonder from where this came among them, but according to this hadith, and it is wrong. No need to write any question, just understand it. Uh, Mustad, I wanted to ask you something. Yes. Now, when it's third raka, you just make intention of the third raka. Yes. Now, when they salam, you don't do salam, you stand up. Yes. So okay. it will be your second raka, you do tashahud, and then you stand up, the, then the first raka, the last one, you do salam, you finish it. So after third raka, you will just stand up. Then you will pray first raka complete. And after sajda, you will not sit. You will stand up again for the second raka. Then you will complete the second raka and then you will say the salam without ah. praying the third raka. Okay, okay, no, I get it. Because you have already prayed the third raka with the people.
so this is another hadith in which they uh, told that this sahabi wanted to move back the abdul rahman but prophet sallallahu alaihi stopped him from doing this because anyone can lead the salah in the absence of imam next student fatima sarbast read this hadith read this one um Chapter 23, men saying that the be and women clapping if they notice anything during the prayer. Sa'id bin al-Musayyib and Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman narrated that they heard Abu Huraira say, say Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the speech is for men and clapping is for women. Ajmala added in this report, Ibn Shihab said, I saw men from the people of knowledge saying that the speech in pointing. Copy again, this is for congregation of the law. Anyone can answer this. Let's suppose, as we know that, again, we will take the example of Maghrib Salah. We all know that in Maghrib Salah, after second raka, we sit for jalsa, or you can call it for reading atayat. Let's suppose Imam forget to sit, and he stand directly for third raka without reading atayat. What shall the people do? Anyone? I think they should stand as well. They, they will. They will follow the imam. Yeah, they should stand, but also according to this hadith, the men will start saying Subhanallah. Okay, the men will say with the Lord voice Subhanallah, and women maybe clap for one time or two times. So to let the imam know that he has made the mistake. So when they will let the imam know that imam has made the mistake, he will uh, say sajda sahu at the end of salah. Okay. So the question is, what shall the people do if imam make a mistake in the salah? The answer will be, men will say subhanallah and the woman will clap their hand. I think we better write this question. What shall the people do if the Imam makes a mistake? in congregational salah. So it happened everyone can make mistake. So every person can make a mistake in congregational salah. So if Imam makes the mistake, what shall we do? The answer is according to the Hadith 954 of Sai Muslim the men will say Subhanallah and the women will clap. I will repeat the answer according to Anis 954 of Sahih al Muslim. The men will say. Subhanallah and the woman will clap so that Imam can make such as Sahu 
at the end. This is, they will let the Imam know about the mistake and Imam will make such a so at the end. Miss Aisha. What shall the people do if the Imam makes a mistake in congregation salah? According to 9, 956 Sahih al-Muslim, the men will say subhanallah and the women will clap. Same thing is repeated in this hadith. The speech for men, which means saying Subhanallah at the time of mistake, and clapping is for women. Okay. And my and my alim, and if it's me, I'm praying at home. Then I forgot. I forget the second uh, shahada. And how do you, when I do salam, I just stand up and do the the sajda to sahaw. Yes, in sajda sahaw, you don't need to stand. You will just perform it directly with the salam. Oh, with the salam. And how do you do it? Okay. So, for example, you completed your salah. You will, uh, just like uh, you, normally you will complete the salah. And instead of saying two salam, you will say one salam. You will say one salam, then you will go to the sajda again, and you will do two sajda just like normally. Then then you will sit and you will read at tayyat, durud Ibrahimi, and dua and complete the salam again. Okay, thank you. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said the messenger of Allah وسلم, prayed one day then he finished and said oh so and so why don't you offer prayers well why does not the worship look at how he is praying when he prays he is only praying for himself by Allah I can see behind me as well as I can see in front of me. So we have two things in this hadith. First thing is we need to say the salah properly. So we need to try our best to stand properly, to make ruku properly, to do sajda properly in the sunnah way, to sit properly in, in the sunnah way. So we need to try our best to do everything in our salah according to the sunnah way. And second thing here is a miracle of Prophet Wasallam. None of us can see behind us. We can only see at our front side. But Prophet Wasallam can see behind him as well. So this was his miracle. A normal person cannot do but he was Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this miracle that he can see behind clearly as well okay no need to write anything next student fatima sarbast read this one Fatima, can you hear us? Um, it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do you think that I face the Qibla? By Allah, your bowing and prostrating are not hidden from me. I can see you behind my back. The same things are repeated. We need to do it. Try to do everything properly according to Sunnah in the Salah. And Prophet can see behind his back normally. Just like we can see our front side, he can see 
is back side as well. Same thing is in the next to this as well. So this was his miracle. If anybody has any question, they can ask me now. So we studied these two questions today. And some questions we did not write today that were just for understanding. See you all next time, inshallah. Ma'asalama. Allah, shukran. Allah, <laughs>